hello my dear students welcome back to the lecture so the next lecture is that what is the minimum percentage of percentage of a steel that you put it in the column we understood what is the minimum diameter of the bar we understood the minimum number of bar in the column now how much amount of steel you are supposed to provide that we need to understand okay so actually it is 0.8% of gross sectional area remember the uh, term 0.8% of gross sectional area gross sectional area in the sense whatever is your size of your column let us say i'm taking a column now okay this is my column okay i'll do in this way and let us say this is 230 mm the breadth side this is 230 and let us say this is 500 mm okay so this is my gross sectional area how do you find the area 230 into 500 is given to is going to give me the gross sectional area got it yeah and what is the maximum percentage of the steel in the column okay now we understood the minimum they are going to ask this question uh, and this is a one of a good question what a interview can ask even if you go for a structural job junior level you can expect this question okay and how do you calculate this i'll tell you how to calculate this very simple do that 0.8% so i'll do 0.8 divided by 100 0.8% no multiply by the gross sectional area that is 230 by 500 uh, can you do it uh, tell me what is the answer you are getting so i'll do it 0 0.8 no so 0 0.8 0 0.8 uh, into 230 into 500 92000 divided by 100 920 mm so 920 mm square this much area of steel i'm supposed to provide this much minimum steel i have to provide if i'm giving a column of 230 by 500 so how do you decide this 920 again we I have explained all these things in my construction methodology course in the ETAP course and all. We know the diameter of one rebar. Let us say if I take a 16 diameter bar, what is the area of a 16 diameter bar? The area of a 16 diameter bar is 201. What is the area I'm supposed to satisfy? 920. So what you're supposed to do? 920 divided by 201. Tell me how many number of bars you're going to get. If I divide it by 201, I'm getting 4.5. So I can consider this to be 5 bars. So I need to provide I need to provide how many bars I need to provide five number of bars in this column minimum. I need to provide five. Okay. Minimum four. We have to provide by our calculation. We got five, but practically, is it possible to provide five? We'll do that. It's not possible. Why? Because how do I, how will I provide five? I'll provide one here. I'll provide one here. Okay. Second, I'm going to provide here. Okay. Third, I'm going to provide here. Okay. Fourth, I'm going to provide here. Good. Another one, okay, I'll provide it here. Good. What about this side? You should provide another bar, no? Otherwise, how you are going to tie that lateral ties and links? So always remember, yeah, one more question uh, which will come. Always remember in the column, you have to give even number of bar. Even number of bars. What is even number of bar? You cannot give bar like one, three, five number of bar. Even in the sense, how much it comes out of? You have to give minimum four, you have to give. What is the next even number six, next even number eight, next even number 10, next even number 12. Got it. So in this way, you're supposed to give, we got the answer five, but we cannot give five. We have to give six. Ha. Five bar actually it is required, but we are not going to give why from uh, detailing point of view, from execution point of view, it is not practically possible. So we have to give how much we have to give six number of bar. From steel point of view, it is not required. From taking load point of view, six bar is not required. Five is sufficient. But from execution point of view, six number of bar is required. So I'll provide one more bar in this place. Got it? This is how you're supposed to do it, right? Yeah. This much is understood. Next, maximum percentage of now, you understood minimum this much you have to give. What is the maximum you can give? So first, you can give 6% of cross-sectional area. When you can give 6% of cross sectional area, when no lapping is done, I told you that when you're using a diameter of a bar like 32, 36, if you cannot do the lapping, you can make use of couplers. So whenever you're making use of couplers, you can give 6% of the total cross sectional area. I'll do the manual calculation and show you. Next, if you're giving lapping, if you're doing lapping, if you're going to do the lapping, then you have to restrict it to 4% of the gross sectional area when lapping is done. Okay. If no lapping six, if you're doing lapping, it has to be six, but both these are only on the paper or, or are both the value like six and four are only on the code book. Practically, it's not possible to go up to four. 
but practically we keep two to three percent. Three is also on the higher side. I'm telling, but two two point five is a good uh, percentage of a steel. You can keep it in the column of a cross sectional area when we design and detail the reinforcement. Got it? So all these things you get from the ETAPs in, when you do the uh, analysis in the ETAP. ETAP will show for this particular column how much reinforcement is coming. If it is coming like three point five percent, what I'm going to do? I'm increasing the size of the column so that the moment I increase the size of the column, increase the size of a column. The percentage of the steel is going to come down. Got it? Very simple. So I try to keep the column uh, reinforcement in between two to three. Got it? Now I'll do all the manual calculation for this. So if I take six percentage, how much it comes out to be? Do it. Six divided by hundred. I'll multiply this by gross sectional area, which is two thirty by five hundred. Do it. What is the maximum you are going to get? I'm doing. Okay. Uh, I'll do six into Six percent, you know, six into two thirty into five hundred, and I'll divide it by hundred. You no, know? six thousand nine hundred. So six thousand nine hundred practically not possible. This much steel will, I mean, this much we can give if you're not doing lapping. Like I mentioned, it's only on the paper, practically not possible. So where shall I keep it? I'll reduce the size. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next. Next. After that, next is four percentage. So four divided by hundred, uh, multiply this by two thirty, multiply this by five hundred. Okay, because column size remains the same. So again two thirty into five hundred into four, divided by hundred, four thousand six hundred mm square, mm square, right? So again it is on the paper. So practically what we do two to three percent. So we'll go with two. I'll take average. I'll go with two point five percent. So two point five uh, divided by hundred. I'll multiply this by two thirty. Multiply this by four fifty. Do it for me. Uh, what is that? Two point five. Uh, multiplied by two thirty. Multiplied by uh, five hundred. And you divide it by hundred. That's it. Two eight seven five mm square. This much steel only we are going to give. Okay. This much steel only we are going to give in this column. Now you decide for two eight seven five how much amount of uh, how many number of bars will come. Dep uh, on on this if I do this how many number of bar will come. Again, I'll go with the 16 diameter bar only. Okay, I'll go with the 16 diameter bar. Area I need to cover 2875. I'll divide it by area of 116 diameter bar, which is 201. You can take 20 also. Again, now you are an engineer. You are a structural engineer. You can go with 16. You can go with 20. You can go with 25. The moment you increase the diameter of the bar, the number of bar will come down. Very simple. I'll go with 16 only. It's 201. So this will go almost uh, 12 number of bars. So 2875 divided by 201. I'm getting fourteen point three. Let us say fifteen, fifteen. Okay, yeah. I'm getting fourteen point three. We always take it to the next higher value, which is fifteen. Practically, fifteen is the odd number. I have to go with the even number. So next higher is sixteen. So I'll go with the plus one sixteen. So that means practically I need to provide sixteen diameter, sixteen number of bar in this column. Now, is it possible to provide a sixteen diameter, sixteen number of column in the size of two thirty by five hundred? Practically not possible. Why? Again, so you can provide. You can provide, but practically on the size uh, side, when you pour the concrete and when you run the vibrator, your concrete doesn't go. There is so much of congestion. Now, what you can do? Increase the number of, I mean, increase the diameter of the bar. So instead of 16 diameter bar, I'll go with a 25 diameter of a bar. The area of 125 diameter bar is 489. Now you got the importance why I told you to understand or to remember the area of one bar. I told 8 mm it is. Fifty, ten. It is seventy-eight. Twelve. It is two not one. Uh, so twelve. It is hundred and thirteen. Sixteen. It is two not one. Twenty. It is three hundred fourteen. Twenty-five. It is four eighty-nine. I'll do it. Okay. Uh, see, it is twenty-five uh, into twenty-five divided by one sixty-two point five. Yeah. No. Uh, sorry. Wait. I'll do it. Five by four. Uh, five by four into d square. Three point five by four. Into d square. D square is twenty five into twenty five. Yeah, four ninety. I'm getting four ninety. I'll consider. Okay, four ninety mm square. You're getting what I'm trying to do. This is what happens uh, in office of a structural engineer. This is how we try to do. Hmm? So if you know all these things, you can rule on the side. Yeah. Uh, so what is the area I'm supposed to satisfy? Two eight seven five. I'll divide it by four uh, ninety. Let me do that. Two eight seven five divided by four ninety. 5.84 will consider six number, okay? See, I'm getting 5.84. So next round, next higher value is six. 
Now for six, again, I will not add one because six by default, I got it as even number. It's not an odd number. If I had got five, then I would have added one to make it as an even number. Already by default, I got six. So practically, is it possible? Of course, it is possible. In a 230 by 500, see, already I have provided a six bar. You can see here, no? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I can write all these things, okay? All that, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, yeah, all those things I can show in this way, okay? That, uh, you know, I can write here and say, uh, you have to provide, uh, what is that? 25 diameter, six number of bar. It's understood. It means that in this particular column of 230 by 500, you have to provide a 25 diameter, six number of bar. So this is how you are supposed to do all these calculations and all, right? Uh, I think most of the things I have covered. See, whatever I'm telling you at, in this level, you don't expect these questions will be asked in the interview. But if you're going for a structural consultant, if you're working as a, uh, I mean, if you're applying for a junior uh, designer and all, then you should be knowing all these things. But if you know it's well and good, always well and good, because many people don't know. So I've taught you what you are supposed to understand, what you are supposed to uh, take out from this course is 0.8% of gross sectional area is a minimum still, 6% when there is no lapping. If you're doing lapping 4%, practically 2 to 3%. Again, this you should not tell them, okay? You should, because even this, uh, many people don't know this too, because if you're not working as a structure consultant, you don't know that. So people have that belief in the mind that we go with uh, 4%, practically we don't do that. So you just stop your answer only up to here. You cannot, you should not go this, because he doesn't know that, then you, you should not tell that, uh, you should not tell all these things in the interview. Whatever is there in the book, no, that only you have to tell. All these things you have to understand so that you can guide someone, right? That's how it is. Uh, yeah, that's it. Most of the questions we have understood. Uh, I taken pointed percent of cross section area. Told you the manual calculation. Maximum is also done. Yeah. Yeah. So one more. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, spacing will come to the later part. Not wrong. Okay. Uh, there is one thing which I wanted to tell. I'll explain here. Maybe when I teach you the code book, um, <laughs> I can take that. Yeah. So like I mentioned, uh, we are we are supposed to provide this uh, rebar, no? Like, wait, uh, I'll go with the, yeah, this thing. Yeah. See, now there's one more thing you need to remember. Uh, the thing is that the spacing between these two rebar, the spacing between these two rebar should not be more than 300 mm. Okay. Should not be more than 300 mm. That means whenever you place the reinforcement bar, no, the longitudinal bar, the spacing between the two should not be greater than 300 mm. Got it? Spacing should not be greater than 300 mm. So what is the practical use of this? I'll tell you. Let us say you design one column and you got that uh, weight. Okay, I'll strike out everything. Okay. Yeah. Let us say you design one column. Okay. You designed one column and you gave a reinforcement in that. Okay. You gave a reinforcement in that. Uh, so, so again, I'll take this, it is a 230 by 750 column, 230 by 750 will consider and you give a reinforcement. Let us say you gave one here, like whatever diameter it may be, uh, another one you gave here. Okay. Another one you gave here, another one you gave here. So this much is sufficient. This much still is because minimum criteria is satisfied four number of bars you are given done. And this much is sufficient and you are okay. But I told you the distance between the two bars should not be greater than 300 mm. Now you see here what has happened. So what has happened in between these two rebar, what is the spacing coming out? Overall, it is 750. If I take out the cover and all directly, I'll do it for you. So 750 is the overall depth. Uh, it's a column, right? So you take 40 mm cover out from the top, 40 mm from the bottom. Then you have a stirrup of 8 mm. Then th let us consider this is my uh, uh, half of this and half of this. You're getting my point. See, we are going from center to center. Okay. Center to center 750 minus cover 40 mm from the top minus 40 from the bottom. Okay. Then a stir uh, stir up minus 8 mm on from both the side. Okay. From both the side I'm taking, I'm taking it out minus you can see this uh, distance. No, it, I've taken it from the center. If you can observe it here, I'm trying to be more precise see, from this center to this center spacing we want. Okay. Center to center. Okay. So from, so if I, if this is a 16 diameter bar, half of this is eight. So this will be from this center. If this is also a 16 diameter bar, half of this is eight. So eight plus eight is 16. So what I'm going to do, 
8 plus 8 is 16. So I'll directly minus 16 from this. Okay. Tell me how much you're getting. You'll get more than 300 only. It's very simple. 750 minus 4040 is minus 80. And 888 is 16. 16, 16 is 32. We're getting 638. 638. So this 638 mm is greater than 300 mm. So now your spacing criteria is not matching. Even though there is no requirement of any bar, this is satisfied to take care of the load. From detailing point of view, from a code book point of view, you have to give additional steel. Then what you do? You go with a very a lesser diameter of a bar. What is the minimum diameter of a bar you're supposed to provide? 12. So we'll provide additional 12 diameter bar, which is actually not required. But from spacing point of view, I'll give one more bar here. I'll give one more bar here. Got it? That's how you're supposed to do. Again, this is from detailing point of view. Uh, what happens uh, in a structural engineering office, but you should be knowing what is the maximum spacing and that you're supposed to keep. That is why I've taken up this. Yeah. yeah. So I hope you have enjoyed the lecture up to here. We'll see you back in the next lecture.